Hello everyone. Today I'm here with uh, Jakub Lodar uh, Zikurski, a Hearthstone player from Poland, also a caster nowadays, uh, part of uh, G2 Esports. So, hello Lodar, how are you doing today? Hello there, hello Dionysus. Uh, I'm doing good, and you? I'm good, thank you very much. So, we had a very small introduction about you, but uh, could you tell me a bit more about yourself? Uh, sure. Um... I started my career as a professional player. Nowadays, it's kind of different. Uh, I'm more of a manager slash uh, chief gaming officer in G2, so I'm responsible for other teams as well. Um, but I'm still, I still think about myself as a professional player when it comes to Hearthstone, uh, and I'm casting most of the Hearthstone events currently being played on major events. So basically, that's that's uh, what you can tell me. That's what I can tell about myself when it comes to esports. Uh, but in general. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes during the interview, right? That's yes, just short introduction. Of course, of course. So, does your battle tag have any special uh, meaning or significance? How did you come up with it? Oh, you mean the battle tag? Uh, yeah, the other one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the nickname came way before I started playing, uh, like, you know, competitive games and, and uh, um, multiple like, competitive games. It, it, it was because of I was a strong, uh, I had a strong. Um, let's say, interest in history, especially Polish history and uh, World War One and Two and so on. And I was also reading a lot of books, uh, like history-wise, but also most of the fantasy books. And there was a book that was called Red Baron. That was about a alternate history for World War One. And there was, a, there was a pilot named Lothar von Richthofen, who was uh, just a cool character. And I was like 12 years old or 11 years old. And I was like, yeah, this is a cool name. I'll, I'll grab that for myself. So basically, that's that's why my nickname is like that. And it's kind of a strange coincidence uh, that it also refers to a character in World of Warcraft. So I, awesome. I guess it turned out well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you are a part of uh, G2 Esports, one of the biggest organizations in the world. How did the opportunity come around and uh, join them? Uh, it all started when I... Um, that was back in 2014, uh, when I was, I had the opportunity, um, after I talked with Kingwin, uh, to create a team and basically they secured a budget for me. So I, so I could have, bu um, built an entire lineup that I wanted. And from that point I was thinking about who would be the best fit for the team. And I wanted to have a team that would be super competitive, but also build uh, by people who can be, uh, well, celebrities, you know, at that point in 2014. And it was hard to establish that because we had Reynard, of course, we had Amaz back then. Uh, but I wanted someone else that can be uh, those stars in the future. And uh, it started with RDU, Tice, and Life Coach, and it stopped that way. You know, I we talked during the Dreamhack, Dreamhack Winter 2014 uh, to create a team, and I made them an offer. Uh, fortunately for me, they all accepted the offer, and soon enough we started uh, the team. And it wasn't, it wasn't yet uh, with a name. First of all, we wanted to have a, uh, we probably w um, would have been a, a team Kingwin, just like that. Uh, but in general, after some talks, after some ideas, we talked it, it through, and we ended up with Nihilum, so a strong, um, strong brand in World of Warcraft because you know it kind of fits. Yeah. Uh, and in general, in retrospect. Uh, I would say that was a mistake. We should have just stick with uh, whatever we wanted in the first place. So most likely Team Kingwin and then transferred something else. Uh, because the Nihilum brand was a huge pain in the ass for myself because I was taking care of it on my own with okay. basically everything. Uh, with the branding, with, with merchandise, with uh, the logos. With the, well, well, basically everything was on my head. So... Uh, of course, I didn't make it alone after, like, I had no clue about graphics and so on and the editing, uh, but everything was basically done under my control, and that took a while, and it took also a toll on my duties. Um, and after that, after the one year under Nihilum, uh, Carlos from G2 Esports, who I uh, befriended during that time, uh, came up with this um, idea that he wanted to really have a top tier team in, in G2 and they also were back then there was gamers too and they also wanted to make a rebranding and I, when I saw the rebranding it was really cool and uh, I thought that it might be actually 
a really good way to expand our uh, our team because uh, after the failure and CSGO with Nihilum and other teams, uh, I was just like, this is too much work for just a few of us uh, that was that were back then Nihilum. So I thought this would, would be a really good venture to transfer our team, our entire team under G2. And that just happened. Everyone was happy with, with, the, with the move. And to be honest, I think that was the best move we could have made. Um, G2 is an amazing uh, organization. Uh, fully structurized and it's the first time I see any form of stability and thoughtfulness in when it comes to planning. Uh, it's really cool to see the insights of a really well established organization, although it's very young. But I think that G2 is already a brand um, that is a direct competition, not only competitive wise when it comes to teams, but also behind the scenes when it comes to the structure to, to organizations like TSM uh, like Fnatic, uh, like Cloud9, maybe we're, we're even better than them. But who am who am I to judge? But it's just like a, a really good organization. That's that's what I what I can say. Yeah, we've heard they they do a lot for their players. They take care of everything. So they're totally one of the favor uh, favorite uh, organizations on the scene. So how yep. did you pick up Hearthstone? And also, what do you like most about it? Uh, how do I pick up Hearthstone? That was 2013. Um, in the past, I was um, before the 2013. Uh, I was a competitive player for almost every single card game, uh, like you know, in, re in real life card game that you could you could find. Uh, I was one of the top 10 players in the world when it comes to the rating in World of Warcraft. That was a predecessor to Hearthstone. Um, but I retired from that game after some point when I was I wasn't happy with the design, uh, which was developed into because um, it was really overpowered cards. It didn't feel good, and I didn't want to invest more in that card game. And I just took a break. But after like a few years, uh, one of my friends uh, that knew that I was a really good player in World of Warcraft uh, sent me a message that Blizzard is actually releasing a beta for a card game of their own. And it looks very similar to World of Warcraft. And he wanted to give me the beta key. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. The game looks really nice. And uh, it's, it's almost the same as World of Warcraft, but it's just way simple and has the same graphics and so on. So I was like, yeah, I can try this out. And after trying it out, after just a one month, I was sure that this game will make a huge impact. And it's the perfect occasion uh, for card games to actually make a splash on the competitive scene, uh, but in the computer scene. So um, I knew this is a good opportunity for me to, to just um, play and try to be a professional player in it. Although back then there was no uh, no ecosystem yet. Everything was built from the ground up. And, um, well, it took a while. But uh, what I like most about Hearthstone, I feel like this is the... Um, in the beginning, it was the the best combination of both simplicity and strategy when it comes to card games that I played before. And also the pace of the game made a huge difference because when you play Magic Online or uh, other card games, they just feel completely horrible when it comes to pacing. Every single game takes like ages and this is not this is not happening with Hearthstone and uh, pacing of the game is really important when it comes to appeal uh, appeal to the audience. So I think that's the, the most important part that I like about Hearthstone. That's awesome. So you played uh, like uh, only World of Warcraft card games or like Magic, Pokemon, Video, anything like that? Almost everything. I started with Magic and Doom Trooper, Dark Eden, Alien vs. Predator, Lord of the Rings, Pokemon. I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh though. I uh, didn't like the um, the design of the game. And then we had like Illuminati, uh, Vampire Masquerade. <sighs> there was tons of them. I, I I don't know if I remember everything, but uh, that was I, I guess like four five four five six maybe more titles. I was trying out everything like uh, Warcry, Warhammer 40k. Um, Everything that was on the market, basically. Oh, that's quite a lot. So how do you approach each season and uh, what strategies do you use to climb your way to the top of the rankings, get legend, etc.? Um, currently, to be honest, I don't even try, you know, because um, I'm not happy with the current system of, of ladder when it comes to the replayability. Uh, and I wasn't really aiming to go to BlizzCon, at least this year, and not like the two, two last years before. I had other responsibilities so you know more casting more um 
more um, just back behind the scenes um, things to do. So I wasn't really aiming to be on the top of the ladder, like in the first year or in the second year, when it actually mattered, when you were like top 10 or top 16, uh, to get into the qualifier. And uh, um, But when it comes to the mindset that you need to have, it's still the same. And that means you just want to... Uh, there are two ways. You either want to play the best deck in the game. Uh, in general, this is kind of perceived like Dragon Warrior nowadays. Or you want to always counter the meta, but it is, this is kind of like a like a really rough estimate to make, and uh, another one that doesn't really work every single time. But when you're in the top le- ranks of the legends, you need to be consistent or have a, le- a really lucky st- um, streak uh, to get high. Uh, but when it comes to just strategies to just go to the legend, you just stick to the best deck that you want to play. And sometimes for some people, this is the best deck in the game. Sometimes for other people, it's just the best deck that they know. Because usually, what is also very interesting, Hearts is one of the card games that um, is, I feel like, the more proficient player, when they practice a special deck, uh, have a bigger advantage over the people that don't don't practice it. And sometimes it's just as simple as playing one different card in the early game, but it makes a huge difference in the outcome. Uh, because Hearthstone is, is, I feel like, Every single card has more impact than in other card games. It's probably based on the fact that Hearthstone is so tempo-based. And second of all, we have only 30 cards in the in the deck and not like 60 in Magic the Gathering, which also makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, so it feels like every single decision you make uh, is very valuable and makes a huge impact on the board. Um, well, which is kind of sad to see right now with cards like Yogg or Tasker Titanic because they diminish. Uh, those decisions that players make and uh, I hope that Blizzard will actually change that in the future because right now it doesn't feel as rewarding um, when it comes to most of the games you play especially that, that end up just by playing Yogg, you know? Yeah. So what style of decks do you prefer playing and uh, also do you enjoy the current meta apart from the RNG factor of uh, Yogg and uh, Tashkar? I would say that apart from those two cards as you said I would say it's actually pretty great. We have a lot of decks. Of course, there will be, uh, there always will be a class that will be perceived as the worst. It's impossible to not have a worst class. Um, I feel like the the thing um, that we're lacking just in Hearthstone is more cards. That's the problem. And I feel like most of the problems would be uh, solved by having a scheduled expansion every three or four months, like a big expansion, you know, at least 100 cards, probably like would be best if we, even if we would have like 200 cards every single expansion, like every four months, and then the metagame will be evolving more because we have more cards and most of the cards will be uh, also rotating into wild faster. So um, that, w- that would be one of my things to, to say about the game. Uh, and I would enjoy the, current me- the, the meta even more. But apart from those two cards, Yogg and, and Tasker, uh, I feel like the, the meta is pretty, pretty fine. There's always a deck for each class that can be playable on ladder. Um, although you can always argue if it's good enough or not for the top competition. But I feel like if you want to have fun or just get to legend and not care about finishing top 100, then you can play almost everything that you want. Uh, but when it comes to the my personal style of decks that I prefer playing, uh, usually I prefer to play control decks. Uh, like I was in the beginning of Hearthstone, I was a big advocate on Control Hunter, because I just like the style of uh, secrets and weapon control and big minions to finish up the game. Um, And I still hope that this archetype will make an impact on competitive uh, scene at some point of the game. Really hope that, because I still like it. Um, But also I like... um, In other card games, one of my favorite archetypes was um, just burn decks. And I hope at some point we'll have uh, an archetype like that as well in... And Hearthstone that has not been named Freeze Mage, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, so you we already covered some of uh, the points for the next question. Uh, so let's see if we mm-hmm. have something more. Uh, you're in charge of uh, making some changes in Hearthstone. Uh, what would you change apart from the parts we already talked about? Yeah, they, I think that still the biggest thing would be the more frequent expansions, uh, frequent expansions uh, for for Hearthstone. This would probably solve most of the problems. Uh, I feel like other changes that I would like to see when it comes to the uh, gameplay itself would be ladder, because I just feel like even a simple change like uh, higher, uh, sorry, longer quays for 
um, top ladder, like an example, if you're top 100 or top 50 even, uh, you don't want to play against people with 3K legend rank or even less, right? So you want to have a better um, competition in that point. So you want to play someone, uh, someone around your rank. And I wouldn't mind waiting like three or four or uh, three, four or even five minutes to have a match against someone that is really close to my rank and not play against someone random uh, that is just like really far away from my own rank. So this is one of the things that I would like to change in ladder, maybe being more transparent with the ELO as well. Uh, I feel like this is also something that I would really uh, enjoy. And when it comes to the competitive scene, I just feel that should be more team tournaments, like, you know, official team tournaments, official team leagues, uh, supported by Blizzard, maybe even a competition. Like, I don't say that we don't need 1v1s because, of course, it's a 1v1 game. And still, get, like, events like BlizzCon should be played 1v1. But maybe alongside them, there should be um, team tournaments because people seem to really like those and they want to watch it, right? That's that's the impression that, um, that I have when I talk to viewers, to players, to teams, to sponsors, to everyone is just like, yeah, we would like to have some team tournaments. All right. I think uh, it, 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 we had like uh, one major, the Archon uh, Team League Championship, and it was mm -hmm. really successful. Yeah. So I, I don't see why not making more. Uh, so for the past cup, so for the past uh, couple of months, you have uh, leaned more towards casting rather than actually playing the game competitively. Why did you decide to make that switch? Uh, well, basically the opportunity kind of came upon myself at some point because I was always, when I was competing in tournaments, I always wanted to be on the desk as well to talk about the game because um, what is really awesome about card games is the fact that if you're a, a really good player, you can also um, just be a decent caster at the same time. It's just, of course, you need to work on your language and I still feel like I'm, I should really work on that myself a, a lot more uh, because I'm, still, I'm, I'm perceived as the non-native caster that is sometimes hard to understand uh, or like the vocabulary uh, but um, I feel like uh, I also I also feel good with public appearances uh, and I had decent experience in my own language when it comes to like you know radio television and so on um, playing in commercials whatever was was Whatever was needed, whatever just required some public appearance, I was always into that because I feel like this is something that I enjoy. And uh, with casting, it's kind of like it melts uh, the two things I really liked about competing and being uh, and having exp public exposure. So I still have to talk about the game. I still need to know the game, basically play it at the, almost the same level as a pro player. And I get to get uh, I, I I get to cast the events and spend time. With people I really like, like uh, Frodo Nensh and Sotl, and I really enjoy spending time with them with, and talking about the game. And I feel like close to the community as well. And I think that this is very important because I enjoy being a part of the community. So, and also it's guaranteed a prize pool, right? So why not? <laughs> yeah. And you also have a very vast experience in card games. So you are of one of the few people that are suitable for the analyst job. So, uh, what are your goals for Hearthstone this year? Maybe the first months of the upcoming year. Mm, my goals, I just I want uh, I want to see where Hearthstone will be going for 2017. I don't have any goals yet for next year, apart from the fact that I want to just improve in things I doing I'm doing currently. So be better at managing the team, be better at the game, be better be better at casting, and whatever I will have in mind in the future. But. Um, for 2017, I would really like to ha to see changes for for Hearthstone, especially when it comes to the competitive aspect. So, balance changes, more more cards, and better structures, better structure, uh, better structure for um, official esports Blizzard events. You know, and yeah. um, I hope that will, that will happen. Awesome. And uh, do you have any advice or thoughts you'd like to share with your fans or other aspiring uh, competitive players? Uh. <laughs> you mean like people who want to be a pro player, right? Yeah, pro player or even a caster like you are now. Well, it's combination of if you want to be successful in something. I think that applies to every single thing that you do in your life. Either it's it's a public job 
or is just an office job or is a pro player or is a caster or whatever you do. But it's a combination of two things. First of all, I feel like you need to enjoy what you want to do and because then you're more con- uh, more uh, you're more convincing for the job then work hard and then there's a lot of luck that is, that it's needed to be in the right place and in the right moment and to make an min- impact uh, especially when it comes to such flimsy jobs like uh, being a pro player or being a caster because it's 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 still entertainment and uh, it's the it's the same when you ask um, like actors about it. They they needed to have a good opportunity to shine in the beginning, and that opportunity was an example given to me by Kingwin in the first place. And but I had that opportunity because I was appearing on the on the events and I was paying for my own pockets to go to those events and appear there and work on my own branding, and that culminated into something else. And it's like a always step by step building of your own own brand, and then you get more opportunities, more opportunities, and you can build something bigger. And I feel like most people want to just jump from point A to D by ignoring the everything that will be in between. You know, maybe not even from A to D, but from A to Z, and just just skip the entire alphabet altogether. So um, I feel like people kind of diminish the factor that it's really fucking hard to get a professional job in esports or in general in every single entertainment area unless you do something that is substantial behind the scenes like you're a good camera operator you probably will get a job at some point if you just apply because you have you have just like this this uh your portfolio that says yeah i'm really good fucking at operating a camera so it's way easier but in general hard work and a little bit of luck and if you yeah. have a goal set, you just go to that goal, and um, it, it's very, it's very vast. It's a very vast um, topic, to be honest. And we could just sit here talking two of hours course. about it. If you just ask me, how do, how do, uh, what's the best way of becoming a pro player? We probably would just talk about it for two or three hours, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, all in all, uh, hard work pays off, right? You say that, but at the same time, you need some luck and you of need course. to be aware of what what is happening around you. It's not always hard work. If you just if it's just hard work, but you're not making it public or you're not just talking to people about it, how how hard you work, everyone will just yeah, well, what would I care about it, right? Yep, definitely. Uh, so a couple of months ago, you had a seizure on stream. How did that affect you and your life afterwards? Actually, it affected me a lot. I mean, I love streaming, but nowadays I don't stream that much. And one of the reasons is that I had that seizure on stream because uh, I feel like I overworked myself. And uh, my my doctor said the same. My wife said the same. My employee said the same. Because um, Pat, before I had uh, before the seizure, I had the seizure in January. Uh, since if I remember, end of April. Uh, 2015 I was streaming daily for like 8 to 10 hours and then I was working up after that for another 8 hours an example oh. and uh, so my, my day consisted just of being at work but the thing is I don't consider what I'm doing nowadays my work I consider it, it, it being my hobby but at the same time it happens so that it is my work. So streaming is something that I just enjoy. Working for G2 is something that I enjoy. Playing Hearthstone is something that I enjoy. Casting is something that I enjoy. So I was just working from 9 a.m. till 2 a.m. every single day, and then I joined it. But at the same time, it takes toll on you, on your health. And after like eight months of working, sorry, eight, well, actually like seven months of working like that, that every single day with no weekends, with no whatever, I was just doing it for, for 15, 16 hours a day, uh, my body, I think, just reacted and said, that's enough, you should make make a break, uh, work less. So nowadays I'm trying to find a balance, but it's really hard sometimes, you know? Like this month, in the past like three weeks, I didn't stream at all because I didn't have yeah. the time. It's always traveling, it's always something else to do. Um, but whenever I have the occasion to do something more, I want to do it. So an example, I really hope I can have some time to stream tomorrow. But at the same time, I have other responsibilities. So it, it, I, nowadays, I need to have to have a middle ground when when I can sit down during the day for like two hours and just read a book or something and just enjoy myself or just 
you know, I, I have a wife, so I need to spend some time with my family as well. Um, it's really tough, especially when you enjoy what you're doing. If you care about what you're doing, and and I feel like I'm really um, emotional and, but at the same time, kind of pragmatic as well when it comes to my my work slash hobby. Uh, it's easy to lose yourself uh, and just do too much. You know? Of course, of course, I totally understand. So also you were in bot into bodybuilding a few years ago, also mm -hmm. competing from what I know. Do you ever plan on going back there? Uh, I was almost into competing because I was at the point when I when I spent three years on building my um, well my body to to actually start competing, and I was as I was at a point when I needed to consider steroids to be a, a, a professional I mean semi professional or just yes. amateur just going into into competition. Um, but at the same time, luckily for me, at the same time, Harson popped up, so I had to choose between those two stuff, and I chose Harson. Luckily for me, because uh, to be honest, I don't think taking steroids would be a good idea for myself. So um, <laughs> Blizzard saved me from that, uh, and I'm still, I'm still going to the gym, but I'm not as tryharding as before because I was really obnoxious at some point and uh, took even more time and preparations than being, being a pro player in Arsenal, I would say. Uh, but, I, but I feel like working, in, in, uh, working out in, in the gym gives my, in, in my uh, case, it gives me a lot of um, satisfaction. And it's not something I really care about when it comes to whatever people think about me. It's something that I enjoy and when I go to the gym. It's, I'm always more happy after the workout and it's kind of like, you know, also science based because you have endorphins being released to your body. So you, you, you actually feel better after a physical workout. But I also feel like it, it, it freshens up um, your mind and that's really cool about it. And being fit in general helps you in real life. So like even sitting up straight is me is being made by the fact that I'm doing squats or deadlifts in the, in the gym. So it's, some, it's something that affects your entire life, although you don't think about it. And I, I actually would kind of recommend for everyone to be going out to just to the gym and do physical activities uh, consistently every week. You know, I feel like this is, this, is more, this is something that people kind of forget in, in the current world, let's say like that. Not only the gym, but also, as you said, the physical activities. You can do sports, you can do whatever, martial Play football, arts, right? football, right, everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you are a castaway in a remote, uh, <laughs> isolated island. You have to choose one Huston personality to help you survive. Who would it be? Ah, oh, this is like 100% Frodan. First of all, we're really <laughs> cl close friends with Frodan, and I feel like he's really innovative, so if it would be in a... Isolated island with him, we would survive easy. We just build whatever we need from whatever we find, and yeah, Frodan for sure. You don't know it yet, but uh, life coach uh, chose Frodan as well. You will <laughs> see it in his interview. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, so I think we can wrap it up. Uh, do we have any final shout outs? Of course. Uh, shout outs to my team, to RDU Ties Life Coach. They are lovely guys, and we are actually the the oldest team in Harson currently. Um, we are together from 2004, uh, 2015 in the end of the year. So though it's actually a really long time when it comes to it comes to esports, and I hope will be even even the next you know years to come. We'll be still together. I really hope so because it's a fantastic team. Shout outs to G2 uh, because it's possible because of them. Uh, without the financial backing and the professional organization behind us, that wouldn't be possible. And to our sponsors, of course. So Sennheiser, Razer, um, and uh, shit, no, I'm really bad at it, passive card, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and need for speed, uh, need for speed, need for <laughs> speed, of course, yeah. Need for speed, do you play need for speed? No, actually, I'm really bad at um, racing games. Ah. I played GTA, and like the first one, and Gran Turismo, the first one as well, but that was it. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, all right, so thank you very much for having this interview with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, yeah, you sure. can all follow Lodar on uh, Twitter. I have the tag right here, Lodar Hearthstone, HS. Make sure to drop him a follow. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.